Born in Italy, assembled in Mexico, and sold by an American company, the 2012 500 is truly a global car. When Italian car maker Fiat swooped in and saved Chrysler from extinction, it was inevitable that they would use their new U.S. sales channel to bring their cars back to the States. The first of which is the 500, sold in hatchback and convertible models. My introduction begins with the 500 Sport, with modified springs, shock tuning, steering calibration, and exhaust tuning. Priced from $18,000, Fiat aims the Sport model at the driving enthusiast, styling it with unique 16-inch wheels, red brake calipers, body-side sill cladding, a roof spoiler, chromed exhaust tip, and fog lamps. It also features distinct front and rear fascias. To state the obvious, the 500 is small, really small. For reference, it's 7 inches shorter than a Mini Cooper. In the name of fuel efficiency, there is an ever-growing number of available small cars, but other than the Smart for Two, none as tiny as this. Using innovative valve actuation technology Fiat calls multi-air, the 500's 1.4-liter engine provides 101 horsepower and 98 pound-feet of torque, delivering 30 MPG city and 38 highway with the 5-speed manual. Gladly, the shifter and clutch are user-friendly because downshifting to first and second is something you do often in search of usable power. Despite the lack of engine output, the 500 drives around town in an enjoyable, easy-to-use manner and pushing the sport mode button results in a tangible increase in urgency, giving the 500 a small shot of adrenaline. The added firmness to the ride quality leaves this wheelbase challenged car in near constant motion on highway drives, infused with high levels of road noise. The 500 Sport feels much more at home in the city. It can also hold its own on the twisty country road, with direct steering feel and a responsive suspension that's exclusive to the Sport. The sheer lack of power, however, mutes this driving fun, and the 500's agility is down a few rungs from the go-kart-like driving experience you get in a Mini. Now, for those of you who are worried about whether or not you'll fit into one of these, I'm 6 feet 1, and with the driver's seat in its lowest position, my head is just approaching the roof. I'd prefer another inch of seat travel here. The interior makeup in general takes some getting used to, with the various controls a bit foreign to what we've become used to. The upgraded leather seats, safety and sound package, and power sunroof are the only options on my tester, leading to an MSRP of 19200 Quality levels, fit and finish, are mostly in the premium small car realm, with the exception of the plasticky shifter ball that's a likely candidate for breakage. Can you use the rear seats for people transport? Surprisingly, yes as the bubble on the roof line keeps heads from bumping, though legs will be pressed into the front seat backs. It seems like Fiat leaned towards a little more cargo room when designing the layout. Unless the 500's physical size is the impetus for your purchase, I wonder why shoppers would choose the Fiat over, say, a less expensive, more powerful, much larger, and more fuel-efficient Hyundai Accent SE 5-door, or any number of new subcompacts for that matter. The 500's homely looks, high teens price tag, miniature size, and desire for premium gas likely relegated to those who yearn for an Italian car but can't afford a Ferrari. For Drive Time on Yahoo Autos, I'm Steve Hammes.